Can you hear me? Don't fidget with it, girl. Don't call me girl. How will you get home, Bridie? You'll have to speak up. She's a little deaf. I can hear you perfectly. For 53 years. We met the night our ships were sinking. It sunk in February 1942. Don't you think that your parents should have got you out sooner? They must have known for weeks that the Japanese were coming. I suppose they, they couldn't believe it. The British were a bit thick sometimes. <laughs> we were patriotic. We didn't want to leave. I remember my mother saying, Sheila, you and I are English women. We do not run away for a few Orientals. But she didn't hear. We had no choice. They put me on a boat for Brisbane. Mother insisted on staying behind to stop the Japs from looting her silver. Were you worried? Not at all. It was quite a big adventure for a 15-year-old schoolgirl. Tell him what your mother said. Right. If you don't, I will. Before I left, Mother said to me, you'll be living amongst colonials now, so set a good example. Always wear gloves wherever you go. Don't socialize with Catholics unless they're French or titled. And never kiss an Australian on the lips. Uh. I was on a small ship. It was called the Jang B. We sailed out of Singapore with 300 people. We were told we'd be back in a couple of weeks, so it was quite fun, really, like a trip up the river. We slept on deck under the moon. I woke up suddenly about 3 a.m. There were people running everywhere. I could see them quite clearly, the deck was so bright. But this was a moonlight. The Japanese had found our ship and fixed a searchlight on it to pin us in position. Its strong, hard beams hit us square in the face. We lay down on deck and, and covered our eyes, but our sailors were yelling, Get up! Stand up! Let the Japanese see that you're just women and children. So we all stood up for the Japanese. Some mothers clutched their children and cried, and, and we all stared at the light. First, nothing happened. Just the roar of the sea and us, ghostly white on the deck. And then there were flashes, like sparks in the distance and the sound of crackers going off. Women were screaming and running around, and, and others lay groaning and being trodden on. Our sailors were yelling, jump for it, jump for it. One of the sailors asked me if I could swim. A bit, I said. So he picked me up and threw me over. The next thing, I, I found myself splashing around. And then there was this deafening noise. The whole of the ship rose up out of the water and, and crashed down on its side. It lay there like a wounded animal spilling oil instead of blood. It took less than a minute for the Jan B to sink. I'm not quite sure what happened next. I grabbed a piece of wood to buoy me up. I, I didn't have a life belt. I remember these toys drifting by. Tiny boats that really sailed, and dolls with eyes that opened and stared. I clutched my wood and called for my mother. Oh, why did she have to stay behind? Who cared if the Japs got her beastly silver? Whenever I could, I called for help. The night was so dark and nobody came. You must have been scared. Not really. Of course you were. She was petrified. What were you feeling then? Shock, I suppose. And slimy from the oil. Oh, I might have been nervous at first when, when I realised I was all alone. But after a while, a chill set in. It made me numb and, and I didn't care. <coughs> That's how the sea does it. That's how you drown. All you can think about is cocoa and a fire. My arms were aching from clinging to the wood, and, and I knew I couldn't hang on much longer. So I closed my eyes and sang a hymn, so that Jesus would take me straight to heaven. Although I'd have gone to hell quite happily, providing it was warm.
but no fiery chariot came down for me. It was a Friday night, and there I was, drenched, without gloves, and alone on the sea. A week before, I had been a schoolgirl, and I wasn't allowed out on a Friday night, not even with a 